their conference in Arizona. Tonight at Don Spears Ministries, we have our special guest, Mark Sargent, on tonight. One of our old friends, we had him back on back when he first got started. And one thing, he, he's the father as far as we're concerned of the Flat Earth Movement, and it's a pleasure to have him on. Hello, Mark. How you doing, brother? Hi, guys. Thanks very much for having me. Oh, Thanks yes, for coming. It's our yes. Thank you yes, for taking Mark. time. Thank you for taking the time out to be with us, Mark. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight, you, tonight, what I want you to do, basically, I want you to give us a rundown over the last couple of years, okay? <laughs> has it been that long since we talked? Wow, time <laughs> it, flies. It really has been a while, brother. For some reason, you disappeared. Who, now, me? There you, no, there you go. I got you now. I got oh, you. Okay. I remember, I'm blind in one eye, and you were in my blind eye. Uh-oh. <laughs> But anyway, before we get started, Brother David Kennedy, open us in a word of prayer, brother, okay? Yes, I will. Father, we come tonight in the name of Jesus, and we pray, Lord, that the discovery of the flat earth and the the further facts of the way you created the world and the way that you created the plane of this earth be revealed. We pray for Mark here, Lord, that you would... Give him thoughts, give him the facts, give him the details that you want to be brought forth tonight. And we pray, Lord, that people would become enamored, that people would become interested and find out the truth, Lord, because it all reveals you, at least to those who are born of the Spirit of the Lord. Yes. All reveals you, and it's all been revealed in your book. And tonight, Lord, we give thanks for this revealing of the flat, plain earth. And we give thanks for this in the name of Jesus. So be it. Amen. 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 And we thank Mark Sargent personally for being, being just let, letting the Lord use him in this way. Because, yeah. Mark, as you well know, there, there's been a tremendous uplifting of people that came back to the Word of God and came back to the Lord specifically because of this, right, brother? Yeah, 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 absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But, um, Mark, if you would, give us a little rundown over the last couple of years, brother. Give us some of the, the big the big things. The highlights the of the what's highlights. happened? Yes, wow. Uh, there's a lot. Okay, let's. it's 2018 now, and I believe the last time we did anything was the end of 2015, roughly. Okay, so... Things were getting pretty big in, in 2015. We hadn't really done anything mainstream with any, with any mainstream media yet. And then some really interesting stuff started happening about the beginning of 2016. The first thing that happened was a mainstream rap artist named B.O.B. from, from the South. In fact, I think it was from North Carolina, Raleigh to be specific. He came out and made an album and a song kind of dedicated to Flat Earth, where he called out the famous astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson in a song called Flatline, where he used some of Neil's voiceover stuff. And that generated, that was our first big push of mainstream media, because it was an interesting story. You know, the B.O.B. was no, nominated for a Grammy uh, a few years ago. And so when he did this story... You had people from uh, just about every every group you could think of covered it because Neil responded. It got into this big Twitter battle on social media, where Neil was you know blaming the education system and saying that you know the flat earthers are you know of lower intelligence, blah blah blah. You know your standard science versus religion type of thing. And Neil did not have to respond to this song in any way, but he did. And in fact, he came on a, a show on uh, Comedy Central. And did a, like a six or seven minute monologue where at the end, you know, he, he literally held the mic out and said, you know, this is gravity. And he drops the mic and walks off stage, you know, the crowd right. yells and hoots. And, and that, that lasted for some time. It, it, that, that really drew a lot of attention our way and it, it helped fuel a vocabulary which, which we hadn't seen yet, which was people, the, the mainstream media started using flat earth terms on a more regular basis even though they still hated us they were still using the terms and so people were starting to look more and more into it and 
that's when the numbers really started to, to rise. So if you go into uh, YouTube right now and type in Flat Earth, for example, and you sort by upload date because the filters, you know, there are all sorts of different filters, but upload date shows you the, the, the biggest numbers. We started this back in 2015. You maybe got 50,000 search results. As of right now, as of this morning, I think it comes in at about 19.8 million. Wow. That's a lot. That's a huge jump by anybody's metrics. I mean, there are corporations out there that would, that would love to have that sort of traction. And we were doing that without any marketing dollars whatsoever. It, we, it, was, it was really amazing. In fact, one of the side effects we had during uh, 2016 was that, and, and just happened towards the back part of 2016, was if you go into Google or any search engine, I don't care what you're using, Firefox, um, um, uh, Safari, uh, Explorer, whatever it is. If you type in the earth is, you know, and, and it tries to fill it in for you nowadays, the first thing that comes up is the earth is flat. And that is because so many people have been searching it repetitively, you know, just over and over and over that uh, it, it, the metrics, it, it immediately put the most searched thing up at the top. And so the earth is round isn't even the top thing searched anymore is, you know, the earth is flat. And that really helped us out in the beginning of, of 2016. So 2016, we're just, the numbers just kept rolling and rolling and rolling. And then just when you thought it was going to, it was going to slow down or, or hit a high water mark, something happened <coughs> at the beginning of 2017. I'm going to jump around a little bit at this point. That's fine. Which is at the beginning of 2017, if you follow any sports, the America, the NBA, the National Basketball Association, has its all-star game, you know, so it has its all-star break. You play part of the season, then you have your all-star break, and then you, you go into the rest of the season. And just about a year ago, there was a, one of the, the NBA's top, top guards, basketball guards, on his way to the all-star game, made a thing during a podcast where he was, you know, he, he, he said, oh yeah, I'm a good speed guy. And then his friend kind of baited him into it and, and, he finally came out and said, oh, yeah, I'm absolutely, the earth is flat. No, no question whatsoever, it's flat. And he went into some detail. And he did this literally right before media day. I mean, media, he was going to have to meet all the media in about the next 12 hours. So he lands on the ground. And what do you think? I mean, athletes are notorious for giving really, really boring interviews. We all know that. You know, it's, they're just trained that way. It's like, oh, it's the offense, the defense, 110%. It's all about coaching and fundamentals. Blah, 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 all that crap. And so what do you think happens? You know, he, he, he goes into this thing and, and it's the most interesting thing athletes ever talked about. Plus, he's, he was best friends at the time with Kobe, um, I'm sorry, not Kobe, Brian, uh, LeBron James, the, probably one of the most recognizable names in, in, in sports right now. And LeBron actually goes on, and I, I use that clip in the beginning of my shows of Strange World where LeBron is sitting there in the All-Star game. And that was only a year ago when that clip was done. We're literally sitting there. LeBron says, hey, Kyrie, you know, is the earth is flat, right? And he goes, yeah, yeah, you know, that's news. <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God, you, you have no idea the dollar, the marketing dollar value that gave us, that, the shot in the arm. Because, you know, even if you had $10 million, you could go to LeBron James' agent and just say, oh, yeah, here, say this. You know, they've got to approve it. They've got to go through their lawyers and all this stuff. And he did it for us for free. It, it, it was just, it was a godsend, no plan, you know, words there. So it, that, that carried us in the beginning of, of 2017. And then we started doing promos for the conference, because as you know, our very first national conference, international conference, the first one in 500 years since the, the Copernican model was introduced was in Raleigh, North Carolina, la, uh, just last November. And it was, oh, so much fun. By the time we got there, it was sold out, which was great. You know, the VIPs were sold out and the general admission was sold out. And we didn't even invite that many media. But by the time it was over, because media talk to each other, they're kind of like paparazzi in that way, where it's like, hey, we got a really interesting story here. And people, reporters started flying in for this thing to where I had done... I think 14 interviews in two days. And these were not small hitters either. You know, this, this was NBC and a ABC and HBO and uh, international press. People, people came in from Australia, from France. 
uh, British and BBC was there. They were doing stuff and it generated, oh my God, they, they were just stepping on each other. We, we got to the point where I think I was wearing three hot mics and we literally didn't know whose camera was who. We, you know, there were people filming each other. It was like, okay, who are you with? Who are I? Because they didn't have the labels on the cameras. It was amazing. And ABC was the, the last one to do their thing. Uh, Vice, I'm sorry, not uh, yeah, well, Vice Media, obviously. And then, uh, uh, oh, who is that? BuzzFeed. BuzzFeed, we thought they were going to do a hit piece on us, and they didn't. Uh, the conference went extremely well. No, no incidents of note uh, other than uh, a, a woman who had decided she was going to heckle uh, someone up on stage. And, and, but we had a good security team, and, and she was pulled out, and, and the cameras interviewed her as well. Uh, but it was, it was three or four days. I, didn't, I don't think I slept. The entire time the energy level was was just through the roof everyone had a, a fantastic time and while we were there and and I, I'm, I know I'm summarizing and we can again we can go back and forth okay. was um, there was a, a documentary team they concluded filming down at the conference so they were they had followed us for the last year so all of 2017 there was a, a big team out of LA that had followed us and they were up here in Seattle with me twice. They were down with Patricia Steer down in Houston twice at one, one time by herself. And one time when I went down there, they went to a meetup down in Los Angeles. They went to a meetup in Denver and then they, 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 in fact, they took me to the eclipse. I, I don't know if you guys got, got enough good weather to, to see the eclipse when it happened, but I get, they flew, they took me down to the eclipse in Oregon uh, where it was ground zero for that. And then they concluded in Raleigh and now, and then they spent the last three months editing it and we're going to a film festival. I'm going to be with them. In fact, it's next month in about five weeks from now, we're going to be doing a film festival in, film festival in Toronto, Canada, where they're going to see what sort of reception it gets. It's going to be called behind the curve and an interesting title. I, I thought, I thought it was I fairly, that is good. <laughs> yeah, fairly, fairly clever because you know, a lot of people, you get, and when, when people hear about flat earth for the first time, they, you know, they get defensive, they get, you know, they get kind of angry. So behind the curve. Yeah. It's a good place to start for us because, because that way the, the documentary people don't seem like they're, cause they are trying to be as objective as they could. They weren't going to be pro or con. It's like, these are the lives of, flatter so i think they're kind of treating it like trekkies if you remember that documentary from years ago where they were following star trek fans all right. the way to, to the conference to where they weren't judging them one way or the other this is a little bigger than trekkies obviously but it was uh, so we'll have to see how it goes and i have not watched it i am i am scared to death of watching it and sitting <laughs> sitting in an audience watching yeah seeing me up there i'm going to be just probably squirming the entire time you know it's going oh no what's happening <laughs> so that that comes up soon and then we've got the um the the conferences that are coming up uh, but yeah the, and i know that's kind of a, a little brief summary of what's happened over the last two years and we can go to different points but the numbers have just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger that to where uh, you know when you go into uh, any any search engine well, I'm, I'm just looking like in youtube if i'm typing flat earth in there the 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 top 50 now are almost all verified huge channels, you know, mainstream, you know, ABC news, all time conspiracies, tech insider, BBC news, vice news, complex news. Everybody's touching it. Everybody wants to, to know what's going on because it generates ratings. It, well, Mark, it's too the thing about it, Mark, is there is, there's no such thing as a silver bullet to kill it. Okay. No, no, can't kill it. How, how can you? I, if, I want, if somebody gave me a million dollars and said, we want you to bring down Flat Earth, I couldn't do it. You can't even, do it. It can't it, be done. Even though I wanted to. Uh, every space story just adds fuel to the fire. The, the Elon Musk thing where he supposedly put that car into orbit. Oh, oh. So it, it, that, that helped us more than almost everything from the back half of 2017. He, he did a, man, a, a fantastic job of, of helping us because it looks so horrible. Mm -hmm. we, we just tore that thing to shreds. Right. So, and, and now, you know, they're, the American space program, they're just, they're not doing anything. And Elon, you know, he's still talking about, oh, yeah, we're going to send people to Mars. We're going to send people to Mars. <laughs> yeah, do try. Do oh, try to do, do that. Try. Do try. Well, yeah, the, 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 that's what's so amazing. And for Christians, 
what you have is a bunch of fence riders. There, I mean, if they're if they're Bible believing Christians, there's no way mm. that they can read the the Word of God and come away with anything else other than the Earth is a flat, stationary circle with four corners on foundations. There's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, sorry, Rob. Rob Skiba, you know, the, the, the conference itself was half Christian, half not. And so it wasn't going to please everybody because you know, there were some people that says, oh, it should have been, it should have been more um, religious oriented, uh, oriented. And um, other people that says, oh, it should have been less. And I'm going, well, you can't have one without the other. Uh, right. You, you got to understand that the Christian contingency in our community is massive. It's yeah. absolutely massive, and you, you can't, you literally cannot have one without the other. And when I built the clues, I realized that when I when I was doing flat Earth clues, by the time I, I got clue even six or seven, the Christian community was coming at me saying, "Look, you you got to stop dancing around this issue. You've got to bring up, <laughs> got to bring up God. You've got to bring, you know, and you've got to take a stand." And I'm going, "You're absolutely right." And so, you know, I I hummed and hawed about exactly how he's going to do that, and so I thought. The the easiest story to to do that with was the Tower of Babel, you know, where it's like the tower doesn't make any sense. That story makes no sense unless you're in a flat enclosed system, because then it's like, oh, okay, well, if it's stationary, then you know where they're going. If it's That's not right. stationary, then the the story makes no sense. That's I great. could have used so many other stories, but that was the one that seemed to resonate with others to where uh, Rob Skiba who I, I've, I've really enjoyed his work. He, you know, he dedicated an entire website to chapter and verse. Basically That's one of the best, it is the coup de gras of yeah. websites on Christian part of flat earth. It's called testing the globe.com. Yeah. Yeah. And he, he caught so much grief from his, from people initially that he even shut down the site for three days. I know. And he, he brought it back because there was, there was just this outpouring saying, look, there's a as much as you you know nobody likes trolls nobody likes being picked on but he, he in his case he didn't realize how much love there was how much support there was for his work and i have mentioned that website testingtheglobe.com i uh, countless times to where because he did he went through with a fine tooth comb uh chapter and verse. oh you know what i forgot for you guys especially here's a recap note i don't generally bring this up but i went to a debate last year in atlanta it was a Christian debate between Zen Garcia, who has written a whole bunch of stuff, and um, he, he, he's really been jumping on, on he, he could have followed Rob's path, but he's like, look, I really, he was big into the Book of Enoch, and he was trying to figure out how the Book of Enoch related to certain things, and when he got into Flat Earth, he's like, oh, of course. The Book of Enoch makes so much more sense now. And so he wrote, I think, two or three more books. But he did a debate with a biblical scholar down in Atlanta, Georgia. And I flew down for that. And it was very, very interesting because the biblical scholar, who had, I think, a PhD in, in, in the subject and considers himself a biblical literalist, he, you know, they went toe to toe, but the audience was overwhelmingly flat. And so by the time they, they opened up the question and answer session, the questions were, were more, and it wasn't hostile. You know, they were, they were very, very respectful of each other, but you could tell that the questions were being thrown at the, uh, at the professor saying, look, how do you explain this? How do you explain this? How do you explain this? And because most of the audience, you know, strong Christian audience believes like, look, it's, it's a flat earth Bible. It is. And, and it, the, in fact, the only argument I've ever heard, and Rob's the first one to bring this up, is uh, Isaiah 40, 22. You know, right. he, it's upon the circle of the earth. And Rob's going, look, circle is not ball. That's right. Circle is not sphere. It is, you know, and, and that makes, it makes sense why, why biblical people would bring that up, though, because these are the same people that even mainstream, the mistake, when Neil deGrasse Tyson came on television just the other day, and he said, no, I can assure you it's not flat, it's round. And we keep saying, look, round doesn't mean three-dimensional. Round, you know, your dinner plate is round. Uh, your dining room table is round. Your hubcap is round. Ball, sphere, globe, those are the words you should be using. And if you're making that sort of mistake, well, then, of course, of course, Isaiah 40, 22, people are going to make mistakes. Of course. Uh, anyway, of course. sorry, I tend to ramble. No, I, that's great. That's what you're on here for is to ramble. I want the people to hear what you've got to say, brother. Okay. Uh, Rob, Robbie Davidson with his live 24-7 um, uh, Flat Earth 
YouTube channel? Is it yep, still yep, up? Yep. Uh, I believe so. Robbie, there's, there's been a couple people now, again, we're working social media. We've gotten a lot better at social media nowadays and to where the, we figured out a few loopholes. And one of them is you can generate quite a bit of attention by running. If you have this, a server or machine, a decade machine where you can run it all the time is a 24 seven YouTube channel. Just, you know, just keep it broadcasting on a big loop. And Robbie's done some wonderful stuff. Robbie, of course, the guy that did is, did the, um, scientism. Yep, Scientism Exposed and Scientism Exposed too, and he was the founder and organizer of the Raleigh Conference down in North yes. Carolina, did a fantastic job. He's also the one that's going to be doing the Denver Conference and the Edmonton, Canada Conference. Uh-oh, something changed? Yeah, I, some, uh, well, somebody was sharing screen or something like that. Yeah. Eh, no worries. So, uh, yeah, but Robbie's done a fantastic job, and, and I'm so happy that he's been doing it. So, oh, that's me. Somebody's sharing that screen. That, yeah, that's my channel, just so you know. Flat Earth Clues. Yeah. And, and uh, by the way, the, the Flat Earth, the, so I, I'm sorry, for some people that don't know who I am, because uh, it's been a couple of years, I'm sure there's people listening to this have no idea. It's like, why, why are you talking to this guy? I, my, my name is Mark Sargent, and I created... The, the short version is the dummy's guide for flat earth back in the beginning of 2015, which up until that point had not been done. There had been other people that had been doing flat earth stuff in, in 2014, Eric Dubay, notably Matt Boylan, Cesar from Germany, Jay Henning Caligia. I think he's from the States as well. And, but when I made my stuff, I really wanted to uh, ask the question. I put the, put the question out there to the internet hive mind to say, okay, I don't, I can't, in a court of law, I can't prove the globe anymore. I can't, I can't do it. Here, here's the, here's I can't prove this anymore. Can't, can't seem to prove it. If, if, seriously, if I had to go to a court case right now, I tried to prove this, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me where I'm wrong? Tell me, tell me where this is, this is actually a thing now. And I put the, I, so I made a series of clues called flat earth clues and I put them on the internet and I did one a day and they were, they were given to me. I mean, the, the flyer clues were, were shot into my head one night, February 10th, 2015, 3.30 in the morning, woke up with them. Didn't, didn't have an idea what I was doing, you know, but I could, but I could hear the entire clues. I've never written so clearly in my entire life. They were, they, when I'm take, taking a shower, I'm going, okay, yep, that's paragraph one. That's paragraph two. That's paragraph three. Sat down on my computer did not backtrack, did almost no editing, just typed it out. Just type, 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 type. And then I kind of felt like Forrest Gump at the end, you know, where he was running cross country. But it's like, well, I got to one side, I might as well turn around and go back to the other. That's why it's like, well, I finished the clue, the, this first clue, I might as well narrate it. So I grabbed a microphone, not this one. This one was a custom one that was a friend of mine. The, uh, uh, in, grabbed a microphone and I narrated the clues. And then it's like, well, I'm, done narrating them, might as well get a slideshow together. And so I, I picked literally the cheapest thing. It's a free thing on, from Microsoft called uh, uh, movie, Live Movie Maker. And I, I just, so I attached them to, you know, went on the internet, grabbed some slides, threw them together, you know, tried to paste them and make sure you know, the timing was okay. And it took me all day to do the first one. And then the second day that the process started over, I woke up going, yeah, I know what I'm going to do the second one. And I did the first seven clues in eight days. And the entire intention of putting those clues out there was, am I wrong? I consider myself a very good creative problem solver. That was my career training, so proprietary software training. I'm a big tech nerd. I love, love tech stuff. And, and I thought maybe I had made a mistake. So I was like, okay, I've done all I can do to prove it's a globe. Can you prove it's a globe? And that's why I put them out there. Thought for sure that some academic, some guy in software, some guy in, uh, you know, with a master's degree in astronomy or astrophysics or one of your major physical sciences would get to me. And instead, the opposite happened. I had people almost calling me immediately, <coughs> excuse me, immediately for interviews. And nursing a, a head cold just you know i'm sorry mm. it's okay it happens <clears throat> so uh and and not only that i wasn't getting any hate mail 
people, I, you know, I was getting, so my email and I, me being an idiot, it's like, well, nobody's, I literally put that in the thing. It's like, well, nobody's going to call me. So I'll just put out my phone number and my email <laughs> address and my, and my, all my other details. It's like, well, and then my phone started ringing and I was actually answering it at the time. And people go, wow, this is really interesting. And what me though, and we'll circle back now to the, the spiritual side of things, which is the amount of people that said, by the time I got to the hiding God clue, they're hiding God, and, and that, that they were being, people that had fallen away from the church were now being brought back to the church. And, and that didn't surprise me because I was one of them. I, you know, I, I was raised in a strong, born-again Christian home. Uh, you went to youth group and vacation Bible school. And, you know, the church was not just a Sunday thing in, in our family. Right. It, it was, and nor was it a, a seasonal thing. It was something that we, we did. And when I went to college, though, afterwards, you know, a lot of things in college, you're exposed to a lot of different things. It's like, oh, there's all this other stuff going on and you get distracted and, and you do other things. But when I got into Flat Earth, it completely pulled me back into the spiritual side, which was mostly because, well, for obvious reasons, which is, okay, it's not a globe. It's some sort of structure, you know, like this, only with a dome on it. Uh, then if it's like this, it's not organic. It was built. And if it was created, there's a creator. Right. That pretty much ends the, the story right now because you can't, there's no scientist in the world who's going to be able to look at this thing going, oh yeah, that's completely organic. This happened by accident. No, no, no. <laughs> never, never going to happen. And the emails just started pouring in. And then I, yeah, so, uh, what, well, I mean, the station is, is not, um, not just a, an odd occurrence. I had a lot of Christian stations get a hold of me. One of the first ones back in 2015 was Canary Cry uh, radio. And from Canary Cry, which Rob Skiba was a big listener, he was the one, you know, he called me, he called me convinced. He's like, well, these Canary Cry guys, they obviously did something wrong because there's no way it could be flat. So he brought me on his show. Yeah, and, I called, but, and I called you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you called me, but... but but time, but but Rob all of a sudden became like a ninety-something percent convert, where he's like going, "Okay, I can't be a hundred percent just in case I'm wrong," because then and and then Rob, like for example, one of his idols was Kent Hovind, nice. and Kent completely. Well, you know, he was in prison when this thing first came out, and when he got out, he didn't know anything about it, and people were asking him, and he's, it, you can imagine his reaction. It's like, wait, what happened when I was away? What, right. what, is, what is happening in the world? And so he has never endorsed it. He has always been, you know, because for obvious reasons, he, because you don't want to be, you're afraid of what the audience might do. Uh, uh, um, Jones, for example, the, the interview that never happened. The, right. the producers contacted me and said, okay, and, and this was in 2015 they contacted me. And they said, okay, how can we do, uh, how long can we do a flat earth show without actually using the term flat earth? And I said, uh, maybe 10 minutes, maybe <laughs> if, if you're lucky, if you dance yeah. around a little bit, you're not gonna be able to do it too long. And they said, sorry, we, we it's just too scary uh, a concept because there are people in the comment section. And I've seen this on just about every show and every per person that, that does an interview with me, they run into that some sort of rhythm where some of the people say, well, you know, I was with you up until the point that you did a flat earth show and now I'm not with you anymore. It's just too crazy. And which is why the producers that have been following us for as long as they have, it has taken so long. The documentary that's coming out next month, that should have been done a year and a half ago. But with the producers that have been involved, they, you know, some of them got shot. There was a woman in, uh, from a, a New York production company in the end of 2015 when you know, she, got, she did screen tests and she, she pitched it at a meeting. What do you think happened to her? They fired her. <laughs> it's like, yeah, flat her. You got to go. Sorry. And I felt bad for her. But at the same time, I get it. You, know, you don't want to be uh, the first. It's, it's, it, you, there's that embarrassment the ridicule risk you don't want to be the first person on the dance floor well sure it's like the in in the evangelical christian move um, crowd you yeah. have people um i i'm going to go ahead and use their names because it's time they did something and that's tom and anita horn steve quayle or timothy alberino and uh skywatch tv uh, mm. They they come on and they they said we're not going to discuss it because it's too division. 
factional. It divides too much, and they claim to be Bible-believing Christians. And I understand they have built a lot of their ministry on aliens coming, aliens right. coming. Well, right. If you do away with the aliens, see, you do away with what their ministry is built on. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yep. And, and, but they don't un, they don't understand to realize it doesn't do anything to hurt their alien business. It's just the aliens don't come from out there. They come from underneath here. Yeah. So what has happened is Justin Paul is now the uh, uh, he's a works for Skywatch TV and he has started doing their videos production work out there. And he is, they're pushing, he just has finished his uh, first, they will, it's been out for a while, called Hollow Earth Chronicles, okay? Okay. Hollow Earth does not do anything to negate Flat Earth at all. Nope, nope, doesn't. In, in fact, uh, Flat Earth, there's almost nothing that doesn't dovetail into the Flat Earth concept. And I, I do mean that literally, but mostly because it, the Flat Earth is so big, we're talking about the whole world, that just about every other conspiracy fits inside it. The only one that ever had a problem with it was um, uh, Richard Hoagland's stuff, where he was talking about how, uh, yeah, I felt bad yeah, for the guy because he, he was supposed to debate me on Dark 30 Radio end of 2016 i believe and he backed out and i knew he would and then they had to replace him with a couple other guys and and we did wonderfully against them but richard he, it's tough and if you guys don't know what richard hoagland anyone's listening do, doesn't know what his his thing is he believes in the secret space program meaning that we've already done accomplished all these amazing things like we've got millions of people living on the moon and we've got hundreds of thousands living on mars and it unfortunately it, the two cannot exist because the moon isn't something where anybody can live on and Mars is just a light in the sky. Uh, not to mention the other logistical problems with the secret space program. Like, okay, if it's secret, then why haven't at least they released some of the photos of Earth, which never were released? I mean, there's so many so many things wrong. And so he's just kind of faded, faded away into nothingness. I, we've never even heard what he's been doing. But that's the only one. Everything else fits. Hollow Earth fits. A aliens, yeah, the only thing it does is makes their commute much shorter. So, <laughs> yeah, amen. As a matter of fact, hollow earth and flat earth fit together like a glove. Brother David, if you got anything that you would like Mark to address, talk about it, brother. Throw it at me. Anything. I don't care. You're muted, brother. You're muted. Oh, that's a rookie mistake. You muted. I hate to see it. I hit the mute <laughs> button, yeah. but it didn't work on me. I don't know why. But no anyway, I just wanted to ask you a question about the Toronto conference coming up. Did you know what date it would be? The Oh, you mean the film festival? Yeah, film festival. The okay. film festival, yeah. It's called, well, we don't know what day because this, like all film festivals, they run a couple weeks yes. because you know, there, there's a lot of movies. So we don't know the exact day ours is going to be yet. So I'm waiting on that because I haven't made my plane reservations because I need to know I'm not going to be there for two weeks. I'm, we're, you know, coming for like three days and, right. and, and be done with it. So, but I, it's going to be, here, I can look it up. It's called, this particular conference is called Hot Docs. So, oh, okay. Toronto, sorry, Hot Docs. And I know it's the end of April. This is after my birthday. So it starts April 26th and ends May 6th. Oh, great. Thank you. And so, yeah, so I will be, I will be there with Patricia Steer and part of the documentary team. And it, that, that these film festivals are basically a meet and greet and it's a big networking thing because you want to see who's going to distribute your project if they're going to do it. So, you know, do, if you generate enough buzz, do you get picked up by, you know, a major studio, does Netflix pick you up? Whoever wants to put it out, and I'm, you know, this is a pretty small outfit that's doing, that made it. And honestly, when when they did the feeler for this, they didn't know if they were, you know, like a lot of, lot of lot, like a lot of topics, they didn't know how far they were going to go with it. So initially, it was a small group. They just came up here to visit me up in Seattle, and after a while, they're like, you know what, this actually could be something, yeah. you know, because it's it was generating a lot of buzz even then. And so by the time we got to the Raleigh. Uh, conference in North Carolina, they had sent a six man team and that those guys were kept really, really busy. And that was a team that wasn't even really interviewing anybody. They were just filming 
the event and it was they were they were literally just nonstop just just filming 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 so I, they've got a ton of content and i think they could turn this into a documentary series if they wanted to so we'll have to see yeah. i'm i'm i i've i've got high hopes because it was a movie about just the people of flat earth it's going into the concepts, you know, pros or cons, and it's like what, you know, the arguments either way. It was this is the which will work out well for us because that way they don't have to, you know, we don't hear the flip side where they're talking to NASA people and talking to Neil deGrasse Tyson or, or whoever. So I'm excited about it. Right. Yeah, yeah that that is that is a good thing, man. I'm uh, yeah. it was like I was saying a while ago when we go revisit the thing I was talking about. I understand the reason why a lot of the brothers refused to take the final leap. Rob Skiba, I admire to the uttermost for what he Oh, did. sure, 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 because, sure. Because exactly what happened to Rob, Rob Skiba will happen to every one of these guys that I've oh, yeah. a while ago. Yeah, you cannot escape it. There and is no, it is it is too polarizing. There, it, I, everybody, which is, which is why I came up with that thing in the beginning, which was uh, you know, compared it to Fight Club, the movie, mm -hmm. which was the first rule of Flat Club is you do not talk about Flat Club. You do not, <laughs> you've got to be really careful. Uh, I've seen marriages get broken up. I've seen friends go away. I've seen family go away uh, because uh, it's so polarizing. And the, the people on the other side, they get angry and I, I, can't really judge them because I was there. I, I was exactly where they were. And I come back and I kind of smile and I say, do you even know why you're angry about flat earth? And, and they're going, well, cause it's ridiculous. I go, no, that's not why you're angry because you've been told it was a globe since you were six years old. That's right. And you have no, you, it is a knee jerk reaction. There is nothing you can do to brace against it. It is now women, I will say women have been more open minded than men and some of the fastest convert stories I've ever heard were from women. But you still you still get that that you you push back. You you naturally try to push back against it. Uh which should give you an idea of the power behind this because everybody starts out in the negative. I don't know another topic where everybody hates it at first. Everybody they, it, I, and me included, I was one of those guys. Is on flat earth. This is a piece of junk. There's no way. There's no way. And then months later, I'm going, oh, you get that moment. You get that that flip, that flip moment. And I've tried to compare it with different things. And the best one I have is it's like if you told somebody who was like say 30 years old that they were adopted mm -hmm. for the first time. And because lots of people say, well, it doesn't matter if it's flat or if it's round. Those people kill me. But I go, yeah, it doesn't matter until you start believing. I can tell you you're adopted all day long. You're not going to blink twice. But the second you start believing it, the second you start believing it, all of a sudden it ripples back in time all the way back to when you're six years old going, wait a minute. And you start thinking about every conversation you ever had with your parents, you know, going all the way back. Way back. And that's the same thing with flat earth, which is because the globe was in your classroom for so long you know if you're just just high school that's 12 years right you know grade school all the way through high school that's 12 years it you all of a sudden think back it's like wait that globe was there wait the globe that globe was always with me all the way you know and and so and i i joked with people and said if you have a master's degree or higher or if you know somebody with a master's degree or higher in any physical science there's probably going to be, you're not going to do much because the conditioning is too far along. You know, that's, that's four years of, of university plus another two years, maybe in the master's program. If they have PhD, they're gone. There's, there's there, they could probably hear it on Fox news and they wouldn't believe it. They, they're just too far gone, but luckily there's not that many of those, of those out there. Uh, but I have run into them like amateur astronomers, tough people that uh, another group, people that spend their entire career boaters career people that have like spent part of their career on the water uh are are but not all of them because i've had navy personnel that's, that's what i want you to do i want you to tell the folks about the the airline pilots oh yeah 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 and also the the navigators tell them about okay. that brother okay so i what was weird again i believe in providence and i believe in everything for a reason I had and completely unsolicited. If I have, if I ever get a chance to to write a biography, an autobiography, 
I know, I already know what the title is going to be. It's going to be called unsolicited because everything that has happened with me up until this point has been none of my doing. I am in, you know, you, you know, this story, which is like, I'm in no control of my life whatsoever. We all know who's in control. I am not in control. I, so I just let, let it happen, whatever happens. And so not only did I have people calling me up and saying, Hey, this flattered stuff is really, really interesting. I also started to get a barrage of subject matter experts and it started in 2015 and it's gone all the way. In fact, I did one just uh, about a month ago. Let me rattle. I'll rattle off a summary of them real quick for you. You ready? Yeah. So it started out and this is in chronological order, but the first guy I got to mention, which was, he came out, it was the United States missile instructor, 10 years, the Sparrow missile systems. Then we had an air force navigator, a Marine Corps sniper instructor, a Navy submarine chief, an army artillery radar operator, an Australian intelligence officer, an American flight instructor, an industrial engineer specializing in valves and seals, a career surveyor of 32 years, an international shipping expert, a corporate travel agent, an air traffic controller, United States Army master gunner, tank guy, aviation and ground training combat expert, a USDA surveyor of 27 years, a 32nd degree mason, an etheric science researcher, a commercial airline captain, a commercial airline co-pilot, an industrial vacuum expert, a merchant marine, an air traffic controller, and a U.S. Navy quartermaster. All these guys came out. And it all started because of that Navy missile instructor. And we'll, we'll go over some of these and you can pick and choose. The, they all came out and they all said the same thing, which was, yeah, we've all heard of the curvature of the earth. We've all heard of the Coriolis effect, which is the earth spinning on its axis. Yeah. We've, all, we've heard of these things, but we don't use them in our daily lives. We don't use them in our nine to five. It's just something you hear about. It's just kind of like a, it's not, not necessarily an old wives tale or a myth, but it's just you hear in passing, uh, you know, like a, like a, a stitch in time saves nine, some cute saying dude. It's like, yeah, 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 whatever. And people just ignore it. And that's what, that's what happened here. Uh, these people were amazing. And I've gone through all those people, interviewed them all in strange world, or they read me statements that they wanted to be anonymous. And none of them came back to recant their, their testimonies. None of, I have not gotten a single email, email saying, you know what? I was totally wrong. It's a globe. You can take down my thing. And the more, I, a more interesting thing was I never got anyone to come out against them. So not once did I get a, like from a, another person from the United States Navy or right. the Air Force or the Marine Corps to say, oh yeah, I'm also a Navy missile instructor and this guy's way off and here's why. Nobody would go on record not even, not even anonymously to come out against these guys. It, it's, it was, it was stunning. And so I, I have my favorites. Uh, which, which one do you want me to kind of dabble with first? What your kind favorite, of, your favorite. Okay. Um, let me start with the missile instructor guy because he, he was the guy that broke ground because he was not anonymous. He came out with his full name, his name, Sean McCrary. And he came out and said, look, we are firing a Sparrow missile system, which is on a whole bunch of boats. It's a national system. We are going ship to ship at 50, 60 miles, and we're hitting our targets. We're not plugging in the Coriolis effect, the curvature of the Earth. <laughs> in, in addition, we're using a two-degree beam radar ship to ship, and we're painting targets. The, the system relies on painting the target. We, you know, you have to – so you, you line it up, you, you fire a beam at the – you know, it doesn't do anything. The beam at the other ship, you launch the missile, and then the missile looks for where the beam runs into. It looks for that frequency. Right. And he goes, we're, we're not firing – you know, we're not angling off the atmosphere or anything like that. We're going ship to ship at 50 miles, nautical miles. Nautical miles are, are longer than uh, statute miles, ground miles. And – he goes, he goes, he goes, you've got to understand the importance of this because if you believe in the curvature of the earth, we're basically firing a beam, you know, through the hill, you know, that, that ship's on the other side of the hill. That, that ship should be so far gone that there's no way we should hit it with a beam radar. And we are, we're doing it every time. That's how the missile system works. And he goes, not only that, but at nighttime with using infrared binoculars, we can see ships. And he goes, people can talk about mirages all day long. He goes, but infrared doesn't lie. Infrared will show you the real ship. There's, it, mirages don't show up on infrared. And he was going on and on. And he was absolutely legit. He, uh, to, to make matters, we, we, we asked him, you know, it was our first 
guest on that show uh, of, of uh, subject matter expert. We asked him, are you sure you don't want to be anonymous? Not only did he tell us his name and everything, but he even sent two videos, which I posted online, one of which was him in a, in a Navy helicopter I being transported out to the Iwo Jima. And then the other one, I can't believe we didn't get in trouble for, was him in the actual Sparrow missile, because he was a trainer on the Sparrow missile system. He didn't just use it. He trained people. He was in 10 years before he got where he was inside. It's basically this modified gymnasium with these, with these missile systems bolted to the floors. And without saying a word, he writes down on a cocktail napkin with a wax marker. He, he writes flat earth, Mark Sargent. He spins the camera around, smiles for the camera. And that was it. I mean, it could not have been more legit. And that just opened up the, the floodgates because then we had, you know, the, the Air Force navigator, he was great. Uh, the Marine Corps sniper instructor, that was a statement that I, that I read. And that, I think that's still very pertinent because mainstream news every once in a while and movies will say, oh, yeah, he fired such a long distance with a sniper rifle that they had to take into account the, uh, the spinning of the earth, the Coriolis. <laughs> And I'm going, okay, well, that got knocked out two weeks later by a, a United States Army radar operator who's firing howitzers. And he's going, look, we're firing 30 miles. He goes, the snipers, they shoot maybe a mile on a good day. We're shooting 30 miles any day. You know, it doesn't make any difference. You know, the, the, we don't care about weather. We just, we're just cranking those things out. We don't have to take into account the Coriolis effect. So the sniper say, and I look, I shoot. I, I can tell you right now, anyone that, that shoots out there, there's two things on a scope, windage and elevation. That, that's it. There's no Coriolis effect dial on the side of that thing. I've never been handed a chart saying, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, I've never heard that ever before in my life. But mainstream will push that from time to time. Uh, the Australian intelligence officer, he was good because he said that when you get down towards the South Pole, uh, there is no magnetic south. He, and I thought that was really, really interesting because it's one of those questions we ask as kids, which is a compass, you know, up here in the Northern Hemisphere, it always points north. It always gravitates north, right? He goes, but the question is, how far south do you have to get before south it's, takes right, over? Right, right. Right? And he goes, it never takes over. Never. It always points north. There is no magnetic south. And that makes absolute sense because the north is just the center of the map. If, if uh, this is the you know, this is the, the world, then you know, we'll use the other map, this one right here. Then that little dot in the center of it, that's the North Pole and everything points north. And that's on right. the outer rim, the South Pole, if there is a magnetic south, would be so weak that it would, would be nominal. Nobody would care about it. Uh, let's see here. The American flight instructor, he was decent. The industrial engineer specialized in valves and seals. And, and we'll go into that and the vacuum guy uh, in, a, in a second. But the, okay. he was the first guy, and I didn't appreciate it. I totally, I got what he was saying, but I didn't understand the power of it, which was he was going, look, he goes, I work for a company that is a military contractor, and there's only five of these companies in the world. And we, we specialize in the hatches and the seals and the industrial uh, doorways for military uh, ships mostly submarines he goes he goes submarines have to be the tolerance levels have to be very 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 strict because as you know submarine movies and you know when you close a hatch if something gets damaged in the ship you, you don't want the you, the hatch absolutely has to be rock tight seal because otherwise water is going to get through and the, and the whole place is going to it's going to go down and he's going he's here's the problem he goes, in all Navy ships, they leave this out of the movies, all Navy ships of any size have a full-blown machine shop on board. Full-blown machine shop so they can make parts from scratch. Because you're out in the middle of nowhere, you right. need something to tolerance, you've got to make parts from scratch. And these machine shops are big, they take a lot of power, the, uh, the machines that are used there are heavy, heavy steel, this is a really big setup, you know, to have a machine shop. He goes, what's the ISS using? because the tolerance levels for their hatches should be just as strict as a submarine. He goes, there's no machine shop up there. How, and you have to have it because it's off even by a millimeter. You're, you know, you're going to have to resend the part and resend the part and resend the part. He goes, he goes, no one seems to care about this stuff. He goes, not only that, but the doors are never shut. You go, you have all these hatches for this thing. It should be like a submarine. You should walk out of it, you know, go from one section to another, shut the door, spin the wheel, crank the bolt or whatever it is. Because if something goes wrong, the whole place is going to collapse. 
and we'll get to the to the uh, to the vacuum guy in a second. But he goes, it never happens. He goes, no one seems to care. He goes, it it just it was amazing. And I go, and I read a statement from him. He wanted to be anonymous. Um, career surveyor of thirty year thirty two years. Good old boy, loved him. Uh, he he was the guy that came on and says he and he was a surveyor, an industrial surveyor. He would do stuff like car factories, airport runways, big tracts of land, and he said. It's amazing that we do all these projects and they never, everyone, all our projects butt up against other people's projects and they never take account the curvature of the earth, eight inches per mile squared. In fact, there's two types of surveyors in the world. I'm going to give you guys some knowledge right now. Two types of surveyors. 95% of the surveyors in the world are plane surveyors, P-L-A-N-E, planar surveyors, which means they treat their projects literally, literally like the was perfectly flat. Right. The other few percent are geodetic surveyors, which treat the world like it's round. But they don't do anything except massive tracts of land like national parks. So anything that has to have, you know, that are nine to five, you know, daily lives, those are planar surveyors. And he goes, he goes, I remember it's a pretty good knit group of guys and, and you know, they drink and talk and socialize. And he goes, as a rookie, almost every rookie asks, it's like, well, when do we take account the curvature of the earth? And everyone says the same thing. It's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's never going to come up. And it never, ever does. And he goes, look, I did this for 32 years. He's going, the odds of, he goes, because if the curvature doesn't come up, eventually you're going to do like you do a big project, a big 10, 10 miles square mile project. And then somebody butts up. You think of it like, you know, the, like crackers lining up next to each other, you know, North, South, East, West, Northeast, Southwest. Eventually one of these is going to butt up against, it's not going to line up because someone's would have screwed up the curvature formula. That's right. It's never, ever happens. You know, city after city, state after state, the projects all line up perfectly curvature is never ever ever used it's just something that is they, they talk about i thought that was great uh internet shipping expert that was great a guy that, that talks about the uh it was a guy who worked for fedex that says the the flight routes when they're when they're ever shipping packages all match up with with the flat world uh corporate travel agent she worked down in the southern hemisphere i think in australia and there were people every year down there that complain about that they can't get direct flights from capital cities in the Southern hemisphere. No matter how much money they pay, they can't get direct flights. And, and it just blew her away when she finally heard this. Of course, of course they can't get direct flights. They couldn't. And, but, but it's a big deal down there and they just live with it up here. We, we don't ever have to deal with it. We can get direct flights and down the Southern hemisphere though. You don't, which is why I did the clues on how you have to connect and take some, way longer than you should have to, to make these flights. Um, let's see the US the other surveyor the ground you know, the master gunner he was good uh, commercial pilots that are coming out I love that there was a female pilot for uh, KLM Airlines out of uh, the Netherlands who was grounded she actually benched herself but she was grounded because she went to her, her the company doctor at KLM and said I don't think it's a globe anymore and they said well we can't put you back up in the air if it's if if, if you believe that. And so they've kept, she's, she's been benched. She's on the ground. Um, my, the most interesting one I had recently was the industrial vacuum expert, which was a guy that, that makes, he was different. He was a guy that makes clean rooms for electronics. And in order to do a clean room, sorry, I got to hang up on a Skype guy. The, um, in order to do a clean room, you have to create a chamber. It's like you basically a vacuum chamber. And you have to suck out as many of the molecules as you can, not just the oxygen, every trace molecule out of there because you don't want it interfering when you're printing electronics. And he goes, he goes, you do not understand the, the, how difficult it is to create a pure vacuum down here, down on the ground. He goes, it is amazingly hard. He goes, it's a three-stage system. He goes, you, you use a pretty big engine to suck out 95% of the molecules of that room, right? All, you know, all the nitrogen and oxygen, everything else. He goes, and then they bring in a bigger vacuum for the last 4%, 4, 4%. And he goes, it's a massive amount of horsepower. And he goes, he goes, just to suck out that 4% takes this massive machine, you know, bigger than a truck engine. You know, this thing's huge. He 
He goes, but he's, it wouldn't matter how big the engine was. He goes, there, he goes, there isn't enough horsepower in any factory to suck out 100% of the molecules. He goes, the last 1%, we have to do it chemically. We have to bring in a, a special board, and it, through a chemical process, it sucks out the last trace amounts. of. of to, and the reason why I mention this is that he goes, the, the power of a vacuum, if you guys have never, ever seen it before, is so unbelievably strong, meaning you have a, an area of air and an area of not air. And we always think it's space, right? He goes, well, that, the, the, the force that it, the vacuum tries to pull it sh- will overpower anything. And I'm going, yeah. He goes, well, how exactly is our breathable atmosphere staying on this world if it is surrounded by a massive, massive vacuum? He goes, gravity, that is not an excuse. He goes, look, I work with vacuums. There is no way gravity is going to counteract this force. And uh, to, to give you a better example, uh, we all know that, yeah, we're, what we're breathing right now, you and I, we're breathing four parts nitrogen to one part oxygen. But there are gases that are lighter than this, like helium and hydrogen and fluorocarbons and ozone. You know, helium balloon, let it go. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go all as, as far as it can. And when it pops, that gas is going to keep going. It's going to go to the top reaches of our atmosphere. So what's keeping that gas up here? What's keeping that gas from being ripped off into space? And then he wanted to relate it to the ISS. And this is where it's important. The ISS is an aluminum and plastic shell that's supposedly full of compressed gas, oxygen and, and nitrogen, you know, the guys that are breathing inside it. But it is surrounded by a massive, massive vacuum field. He goes, that, that thing should just explode instantly. There's, there's no way an aluminum and plastic shell can hold that gas in the vacuum of space. It isn't. He goes, he goes you think I'm kidding. Think about the submarines that are down below when it gets to a certain they depth. Blow, you know, they explode. Yeah, the submarine will absolutely crush like a beer can. There, in fact, I used, a, and I'm going to use this on every show that I do from now forward. Somebody sent it to me. The Germans, of course, did this recently, which they took a rail car, a steel rail car, you know, from a train and hooked it up to a vacuum force. And then they flipped the switch. And it wasn't like they, they gradually flipped. They just pulled the crank on this thing. And that rail car imploded instantly. I mean, in, in a split second, that rail car looked like it had gotten crushed by Godzilla. And this was a steel rail car. That's what should happen to the ISS only in reverse. The ISS should just blow up. And I'll, I'll take it one step further. Sorry, I know I ramble. The, uh, the uh, one step further is find me a video of an astronaut in a vacuum chamber. You'd think if they were testing all these spacesuits, you're not going to find them. And there's, and, and in fact, the only time you ever see vacuums training, they're, they're in a swimming pool. Why are they in a swimming pool? They're in a swimming pool for two reasons. One, because they've got to, they've got to train somewhere, right? They've got, to, they've got to show you something. They're not going to just train in a room with wires. So a swimming pool, will, but it looks good for the cameras when they, when they do that. The, um, the other reason is because if they trained in a vacuum, their suits would just blow up. The suits, remember, it, it, your, your, your arm is surrounded by a sleeve, and in the pocket of that sleeve is an air, air pocket. It would, just, it would just expand immediately, and their, their suits would be unusable because it would be like, like wood. They would just, they, they, the tension, the, the fabric would reach its maximum density. The only video I've ever seen of an astronaut in a vacuum chamber, and they did this in the 60s, I think they were trying to figure out oh, how we could fake it. The guy blacked out immediately. Not killed him. Well, almost killed him. Almost killed him. And, and that's why, by the way, the ISS, why it's, it's, it's just, it's amazing to me how the International Space Station, they're walking, flying around in their khakis and their polo shirts and their socks. <laughs> when, when a, if a meteor the size, if you believed in space, if a meteor the size of a nickel punched through that thing, it wouldn't be like the movies where it's like, oh, we got to get some duct tape and patch this thing up. Look at that rail car video. That rail car, it, you know, we're talking about a pretty big volume of, of area, and that thing just imploded literally instantly. So if a, a, a meteor, a micrometeor punched through that thing, there wouldn't be talking about getting a, a, a duct tape on that. They'd be dead instantly. 
because they would suck all the air out of the room. It would suck all the air out of their lungs. It would suck the air out of everything. It, you know, instantaneously, they, they, exactly would be, right. they would be gone. And it's so anyway, that, that expert, he was going, look, the, the, the ISS, him, between him and the, uh, the industrial seals guy, they're going, the ISS is an absolute lie. Of there course. is no engineering way that that thing exists the way it is advertised. There is now, no I, way. I, I want to say something. I want to say something to the people mm-hmm. out there that's listening. Mm-hmm. You Christians, think about what he said. Some of you, you might have been over your head a little bit, but just say, what you're doing, you're, you, you're believing a lie. It's what you're believing. I read like Brother Rob Skiba said and some of the other brothers they talk about, is this the grand deception? Is this that they, this that because they believe not the truth, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie? Is this part of the lie? Well, if it's not, it, it sure is a big one, okay? It, if it's not, if it's not, half of it, then it sure is a big part of it. Right. Because this right here, if you believe that, you cannot believe what they're selling you on the media. You can't believe, you can't do it. Not, you cannot do it. I don't care how you try to justify it. And I love Brother Ken Hovind, and I love a lot of the brothers out there that are still hanging on because they refuse to believe what the Bible says literally. Okay, and because of their their indoctrination, like Brother Mark said, from a child, even in churches by their pastors, I was indoctrinated that. So were you, Brother Marty, you as well. Okay, hope you're out there, but you were you was in you were indoctrinated too. But we and it wasn't that they were lying on purpose. It's because it's all they knew. This generation is going to grow. If the Lord tarries, there will be a generation that will accept the biblical flat earth again, I believe. What do you think, Mark? Oh, I absolutely agree. We've we've come to the point where, and I, I know I threw a lot of information real quick, but we've come to the point where, I'm not going to say the population has been dumbed down, but what they've done is they've allowed the average person to really focus on entertainment more than anything else nobody's really we're just kind of going through school and and just trying to get out as fast as we can because we we as people it's like i don't want to learn anything i just want to be entertained and so science has really taken advantage of that because now it's like well just leave science science to the scientists you you worry about the kardashians you worry about you know who's your favorite quarterback you worry about you know whatever you your next escapism thing is, we'll handle the rest. The problem with that is that it leads to corruption almost immediately, which is science can say basically anything they want, and we take it as face value to where, uh, you know, they, 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 they've taken some big, big liberties. And again, I'm not, I'm not an anti-science guy. I grew up in a, you know, in fact, we're talking over technology here. There's some cool stuff that science has created. Look, light bulbs, air conditioning, microwave ovens, even the average person doesn't know how a microwave oven works. Those things are all great, but then they make huge, huge leaps. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not, yeah, you know what, I'm going to, I am going to cast a few stones here. Because where they tend to, it starts out in, the, in the, the industrial sector, the private sector. And that is, how many times have we seen science rush a product to market before they knew what it was about? Right. Uh, you know, you, you're, you're old enough to, to remember, I mean, back in the day, I mean, good Lord, let's, lead paint, lead gasoline, DDT, which almost killed the American Eagle. Uh, and all the variants of that, um, asbestos, we're still paying off on that. Right. Uh, and th- I don't know, how about the scientists that took all the money and told everybody that cigarettes weren't, weren't bad for you? It goes on and on and on. You know, there's all sorts of, of fun things that they've done. But when it comes to space and this particular deception, like you said, if it's not the great deception, boy, it, I don't know what it could, you know, the, the, whatever it is is going to be pretty mind-blowing if this isn't it because uh, it's, it's really, really big. But they, they took that and they created an agency called NASA and they basically said, these guys are on complete, you know, completely on the, they made them the face of science and they are infallible. That's and, exactly right. That's what they did. 
they were, and that part was pretty clever, which was, it, it, is, it is a military organization. Do not may, think it's not. Yeah, I know there's RV, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, but th- NASA is part of the DOD. It is based on mil- military technology, but they spun it differently. It's like, okay, they wear white, they don't carry guns, and they smile for the camera. That's pretty brilliant. And then all you have to do is throw in a little scientific angle. It's like, well, they're doing explorations. They're doing Star Trek. You know, they're part of the Federation, that, that sort of thing. And, and <laughs> yeah. that part is it. We, they're, they're heroes. We, we, NASA manufactures heroes. Well, you know, maybe back in the day. So because of that, they have gotten a pass for decades. Up until very, very recently, everybody took whatever, no matter what production value they put out there, they took it at face value and says, well, it's on mainstream news. It's from NASA. It's got to be real. And when do you think somebody's going to break? This is, this is a total change of subject in a way. Mm-hmm. But when do you think somebody's going to break the mold and go to Antarctica? That's not military. When do you think they're going to do it? So uh, if, enough, if enough people get together, it can be done. It can be done. It's going to be tough because Antarctica was the thing that they locked down. Again, for people that don't know, the Antarctic Treaty was put in place in 1959, the same year that the Van Allen radiation belt was announced by NASA. And the Antarctic Treaty is the only unbroken treaty in the history of us, of civilization. You know, it's, it's not up for debate until 2041. And it basically says that no corporation can set up shop there for any reason ever uh, you know if you you if you start up a country and it becomes an economic power this piece of paper is put in front of you and it says you cannot go to antarctica to set up shop now you can go down there but again have your picture taken with penguins absolutely great, great well uh, you know but and cause spend ten twelve thousand dollars to do it but you are not allowed to run amok and also again antarctica is owned by no one find me a piece of real estate anywhere in the world that is not owned by multiple groups. In this case, it's literally known by no one. No one's ever laid claim to it. And it's amazing to me. Now, when people will go down there, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough call because in order to get, to get there, you're going to have to have some resources. And eventually, you would have to have a pilot that is willing to fly without GPS, the, the global positioning system, which was designed by the United States military back in the mid-90s. Uh, which is also farce. It doesn't exist. Uh, the, the, the GPS system is just a, uh, the, the old Loran system, the ground radar system with a different sticker on it. And then you can, yeah, you can sell it for as much money as you want and say, Oh yeah, even though it's got huge dead spots. Uh, it is, it is an amazing, what we're, where we are right now though, is the, the reason why it's resonating and getting bigger and bigger and bigger is word of mouth and that the, the tech that we're using right now, social media has really changed the game where people are sharing stuff, links. It only takes, you know, pe- uh, in fact, uh, last year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Flat Earth was the number one searched thing on Google and the internet and YouTube. It was, it was it, in fact, there was an article recently that said that, because a lot of people get recommended flat earth in in youtube even though it's like look up jfk it's like oh seven flat earth videos for you it doesn't make any sense and the reason is because one we're being allowed to do this and two is that that because people when they can start watching them they watch a whole bunch of videos in a row i mean you've watched a whole bunch of flat earth videos oh, and, yeah. and the youtube guy said look if you watch 20 flat earth videos in a row that video, those videos are going to get recommended to other people. And you, it just keeps, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So now, I mean, I've got a one NASA guy on the lot, the line, but he, you know, he had to go to the hospital. I'm still waiting to hear from him. You know, are we going to get the ultimate whistleblower? I'm not sure. But at this point, I'm not too concerned because it's expanding people that are into it now and there's so many people that are into it, but they're closet into it. They, yes, that's, they, that's, yes, yes, yes. they don't, you know, I guarantee people listening to this right now, you know, yes, flat earthers. Yes, I yes. absolutely know you, you do, but they, they, they're not going to talk to you about it because they're afraid of looking like nuts. So it, they, you know, they watch it quietly at night, you're on their phones. And it, it, it kills me because I get these emails all the time from people that say, Oh yeah, I, I, I'm a flat earther, but I don't know if there's anybody else in my area. 
I go, yes. Yeah. I go, yeah, there are. And there are people that, so we do, we're doing meetups in just about every city now. It, it's, it's great. I have to do promos all the time now for people that are doing them. And the people that are going to them, a lot of them will sneak off to them. You know, like a, like a, like a secret because they really, I've been, <laughs> I've been to a bunch and they're kind of like, like happy versions of AA meetings. Yeah. If that, it sounds weird, but it is, you know, you get there and it's like, yeah, my name's Mark and I'm a flat earther. Right? And people are going, Hey Mark. It's like, I started my flat earth journey. I'm going, yeah, I, I know this, how this story plays out. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been a fantastic ride so far. And again, I, I, I just put my faith in in God and you know that that I will be taken down to the path that I'm supposed to be on and so Amen. far so far it's worked. Amen. Brother David. Brother David Kennedy. Say he clicked himself off. I want him to come back home for a second. There yes. he is. Yeah, brother David. I'm sure you got that's what you want to throw it, Mark. I was letting him ramble. It was all interesting. Stuff. I'm sorry. I, I, I've rambled a lot before. <laughs> no, I, I just captivated listening. It's a great subject, great information, and uh, I was really enjoying it. I just thought I was kind of in the way with my picture there. People could no. see the <laughs> Mark Sargent if they, I wasn't taking up the screen for no Oh, no, no, no. Don't no. don't worry about that. I don't believe me. I hate being on camera. This is I don't do a lot of video interviews. And so when the documentary team was telling me to it's like it's like oh please don't film me. I'm not kidding you. I may actually die when I watch the actual documentary. Brother Kevin, brother Kevin, you and brother Pete, y'all got anything? <clears throat> Uh, not really. I, I appreciate your work and uh, enjoyed it. And I, I know you're probably, you know, spending, it's all going so fast, like you say, you're spending more time still waking people up about the whole thing where, I mean, yeah. I, I accepted it right away pretty quickly. And that's Brother Don. He told me about it. And because it was coming from him, I, I took it well. I, there's no way. I mean, it sounds kind of crazy, but, uh, but, but how long, but how long did, how long did it take you though? I mean, you didn't, you didn't do it in a day, did you? A week, maybe. Well, it's, that's not bad. bad. Pretty good. Uh, you, I mean, that, that was, that was what all I really needed to know. And, um, uh, Rob Skiba's stuff, that just nailed the that yeah. nail in the coffin for me because it's in the Bible. I'm good. But the thing is, um, do you, do you get into the, any of the other interesting aspects? Like, um, is anybody talking about where the tide comes from? It's not the moon. And, I've and other things like, uh, like for example, when the daylight starts getting longer, when the days start getting longer, mm -hmm. and after about a week, you got one minute more daylight in the morning, and you got two more minutes daylight in the evening. Yep. And I don't know how that works without portals. As discussed by the Book of Enoch. Book of Enoch. I could go either way on that. Um, the what was the first one you had? Your first one was uh, the tides. Tides. Okay, let's let's do the tides first. And honestly, yeah, the the Book of Enoch is a wild book. On I, and honestly, I it did not resonate that much with me until I got into flat Earth, and really until Zen Garcia pointed me back at it. And Rob Skiba is like, "Hey, you really should look at Enoch again." It's like, really? Okay. Um, but as far as the tides go, I treat it no different than the worlds that we're building on a small scale now, the, the ones that we do uh, mostly in computers, which is we create something called a physics engine. So because, because yes, if the moon is very, very small, you know, tiny by comparison, it's not 2,000 miles wide, it's only like 50 miles wide. Yeah, I suppose you could, ha you could try to attach a massive gravitational force off of it, but that would be inefficient and it would come up with some weird results. So when we build stuff like that, when we're doing the tides, you know, in, in our worlds, we control it from below. The, the tides are literally controlling the ground, underground, you know, a, a molecular magnetic force. Uh, which controls, which it is basically, it's gravity. So like Neil deGrasse Tyson will come on and, and say, even mainstream science, you can ask any scientist this, and they'll say, yeah, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can't actually explain the, the, you know, the, the, the core part of it. But we do it, when we build it, uh, we just create it like a, like a magnet, but a magnet that can grab anything, not just metal. 
you know, if you had a magnet that can, that can grab plants and birds and, and water, then you can do whatever you want with the water. You can shift it around on the heart. Uh, but yeah, you're right. The, 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 the tides are not being controlled by the moon. Well, uh, I, and, and I mean, if you look at tide information on yeah. the east coast of Florida, there's two tides a day. Right. On the west coast of Florida, there's one tide a day. Right. The source of the tides coming is, I mean, as best I can tell from the deep, the deep places of. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That, it, that's places that are isolated from the deep, like the west, like the Gulf Coast. Yeah, the whole um, Gulf of Mexico is kind of blocked by Florida and the islands and all that shallowness. And right. So, you know, the you, you, you're the absolutely right. I, I, again, it's what we are doing now. The, the moon in, in every simulation that we do, the moon is always tiny. We don't build giant moons. We just build tiny moons. Uh, and gravity is everything regarding gravity is, is controlled from below. Uh, and I, you know, y'all have to rely on you guys for the chapter and verse on this where, cause I think it was Genesis uh, maybe where they were saying that the sun and the moon and the stars were basically just lights in the sky, the sun for the day, the, the moon for, you know, a night light at night. And they were for timekeeping, you know, for seasons because nobody had clocks back in the day. It was basically just a giant elaborate clock system. All it had, to, that's all it was there for. But when but when you have a clock system like that people will blame you know they will point at the clock system and say well it's obviously the clock system that's doing this because they don't have any other explanation for it it was only when science came in later that said oh okay well there's got to be some gravitational force and even even science was doing that because they were playing on the old stories which was when the moon is in this type of the sky the tide the, the waters are doing this therefore We'll just tie the moon to it, you know, in, in some way, and we'll say, well, okay, that's gravity. Gravity, I have never seen a word used more often by science to try to shoot us down than, than gravity. Um, to answer your second question, um, if, in fact, you've got the model behind you. I can see it. Are you, you're green screening that, right? Yeah. yeah. That's fun. The, um, the, the sun and the moon, you know, you know travel abo above it like a yin-yang symbol, but they, um, they, don't, they don't go in the same path. So it's sort of, and I know you, you're probably not old enough, or maybe you know, uh, like a needle on a record player. So as the record, you know, as you're listening, the needle yeah. moves in, and if you reverse it, the needle goes out. Uh, but as far as anything else, but I do think there, there's probably portals involved, because the Antarctic sun, we still can't explain it, if it is real. You know, we do get conports, uh, Jaron uh, and some of the other guys, when they're, when they're asking for data from McMurdo, yeah, it doesn't look like they do like it does a twenty four hour cycle. There seem to be these gaps in in the in the film, and they called them up. They said, oh, "Well, we don't have the bandwidth to to store that." It's like really the extra six seven hours you couldn't do that. But there are other people that say that it does happen. But since it's only the military, the military scientists that are down there, it's tough to get any credible information. But let's say, just for example, that it is. Let's just say that there is a twenty four hour sun that's happening down there. If that's the case, then yeah, you're talking portables, multiple light sources, and it, it worked because, again, the, it's such a hostile environment that even today, 2018, I think there's only like 5,000 people, aside from many maybe uh, secret military bases, uh, that are down there. So the general public is not down there to, to deal with it. And even if they were, they're not going to think twice. So uh, yeah, I could go either way on, on that. Yeah, I've got to where... I mean, I start looking at all these other little aspects about just day-to-day -day life that I never looked at the same or even thought twice about before the flat earth. And it's like, take example, first light. I don't know how early you get up, but it happens half hour before sunrise. And, mm -hmm. it, and last light, you know, the light lasts a half hour after the sun goes down. Right. In Genesis, the light existed before the sun and the moon. Oh, oh yeah! Don't get me. Oh my God, the the parallels uh, that I that I ran into. We, we were talking about that in the early versions of the simulations. Remember, the simulation stuff we've been doing is only twenty years old. You know, we we have not been doing this very long. And again, I don't think it's a coincidence because now, and I I feel lucky that I've been in that industry that it that it really I caught it. It's like ah, I see. You know, if you were going to build the world, granted, it's much much smaller and not as cool or beautifully detailed but the early versions that we made there was no sun and the moon the, you, there's just light and dark 
that's all it was. It was just different shades. The, 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 you know, would just get lighter, you know, or, and we see this every once in a while anywhere, you know, when we're, when the sun goes beyond our, you know, what, on the other side of the house, you know, yeah, it gets, you're looking backwards the other way. Yeah. It gets lighter or darker. But as this world got more and more intricate, and I'm not speaking for God, you know, and God, I'm sure is, it has his own intentions, but as this world got more and more advanced, things were added, you know, it, the you know the sun obviously you know the sun the moon the stars decorating the moon I think was brilliant. Uh, people are saying, "What do you mean decorating the moon?" I'm going, "Okay, it's something that most people don't notice is that all the moon craters are circular." And he's like, "Okay, what does that mean?" Well, that means it got hit by a meteor, right? It's like, yeah. Well, you only get a circular crater if it hits directly at 90 degrees. You know, it's coming in square, you know, straight down into it. It's like. Yeah. So it's like, well, statistically, that's impossible. I go, what about all the other meteors that are coming at the moon? You know, glancing off the side, you know, that thing should look like a shooting gallery got a hold of it. You know, not just these perfectly, wonderfully, you know, craters over the outside. It was like the moon was decorated with craters. And I, I thought that was good. Or little, little things. Again, I, I, I'm just in awe of the design of this place. Like, Here's one that, again, I, I think I mentioned in the Flat Earth Clues, which was just make the oceans, uh, add a 3% salt solution to the oceans. It's like, what does that do? Well, it limits naval exploration by about 95%. Because remember, back in the days, the, old, you had the limit of how your ship could travel was based on how much fresh water you could carry. Because once you were out of fresh water, you were done. You had to turn back. I mean, there was that point of no return where you had to, you had to head back. And what that does is if you cannot drink the water that you're sailing on, it slows down the detection of where we are. Meaning, I, I, again, I, I, have a, I have a firm believer that God intended us to figure this out. Sooner or later, it was going to figure out 5,000 years or whatever it was going to be. I, I don't know what your timelines are, but, but you want to slow it down to where you, you, you don't want people to figure out immediately. And Antarctica is, is the perfect example of that. Once you start heading there, once you start getting close, there's icebergs. Icebergs will scare away almost any ship captain. But let's say you press on. You get there. Okay, well, the, the, the freaking shoreline is 200 feet up of ice, and you got to get above that. And once you get above that, then you're heading inland with no indigenous land, uh, plant life, no animal life. No, no, there's nothing. You got to bring your own food and everything with you. The place just screams, go away. And, uh, and it obviously goes on for a long, long time. It's not like it's only a couple hundred in, miles in from the freaking shoreline. It goes a long, long way. And I'll use the, um, uh, again, forgive me if I butcher this, the book of Jasher, where the end of chapter three, and this is when I, I only mentioned this because it, it really stuck out to me. When Enoch was leaving, Enoch was walking off the earth. And he got to this point, he, you know, there's all these people following him going, don't go, don't go. And he's going, look, I'm going to a place where you're not going to be able to follow me. And he get, he, apparently he walked to the edge of the earth where there was ice and snow and more ice and more snow. And that was how the chapter three ended. And I was going, and they were That's really the last part of the book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's, they're really specific about that. And I thought that's really interesting because in almost any other biblical thing, you're always hearing about deserts and, you know, lack of, it's, it's never snowy. You know, it's always this whole, you know, this, this dry, arid environment. And in this case, it was, it was nothing but uh, um, snow and ice and, and, and they couldn't follow him. And he literally, you know, he, he went to the edge and I think something carried him off. I can't remember exactly what, but the, everyone else had to turn back. And, but there was this, this area. I was going, okay, I, that makes sense because the, the tip of South America, what if, say, there was a land bridge back then? They, and he did walk off, and everyone you know, tried to follow, and he couldn't do it. So I don't know. Well, according to the Bible, there's, there's doorways in the firmament and windows as well. Oh, sure. So, so um, by the way, Brother Pete is, lives in Australia, so he's upside down right now while he's watching. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> hey Pete. Hey, hello. Yes, I'd like to ask something if it's it's a little bit um, tricky, but um, sure. The firmament that we have on top of the Earth mm -hmm. does that continue on, in your opinion, underneath as well? Because it, oh, you mean like mean stopping us from digging to to go under it? 
Well, we 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 know there is a we know there that Sheol and, and oh right 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 it could be and, I I've got I've got no problem with that uh, at yeah. at all uh, it, my only question is it, I, I no problem with that if it goes underneath yeah. uh, my only question is how far out from the edge of Antarctica are we talking about here because Admiral Byrd was looking mm-hmm. for the edge for the better part of thirty years and that that lets me know that's like okay. He seems like a pretty good guy as far as navigation is probably thousands of miles out. Now, it may not be perspective wise the same as like saying putting a quarter in the middle of a, a teacup saucer, you know, yeah. to where they were talking that far. But maybe, I mean, 30 years is a long time to be flying around with better and better planes. Now, granted, he didn't have he wasn't using jets by 56 to pull this off, but. Uh, but I think, but I think the the dome is is shallow. I think it's shallow in height, and it is way. It is. I think it's very very wide, like a like a sports yeah. stadium, type of mm. thing. And yeah. it, as far as doorway doorways coming out of it, I don't think it's. I don't think it's all access for everybody. No, which is no. why I, I still believe that some of the older. I don't even call them aliens. I, I literally call them the older versions of us. I, I've I've always felt that way, where the the remnants of previous civilizations lying around uh, that have certain they have rules they're not supposed to follow, and and they're still governed by God. And I know you guys, it may be a little wild, but it's interesting that you say that because Brother David Kennedy and I have been doing a series on that older civilizations or another group of people. Yeah, pre pre Adamic living underneath the Earth. Sure, mm. sure. Why why not? I mean, the Hollow Earth don't and and people when they think of caverns underneath the Earth, they do not have to be that high. Uh, people, the average person forgets that we live ninety five percent of our civilization lives from sea level to one mile. That's it. Uh, yeah, that's mm. that's almost all of us is just zero to five thousand feet. That's it. Mm. Uh, our our commercial airlines cap out at about ten miles. That is not very high. Uh, spy planes, give or take the classified files, maybe twenty miles. So even if you had a cavern that was only fifty miles high, that's that's more than enough to to sustain any mm. civilization that I can think of. Yeah. Uh, the only question is, are they here with us? You know, and and then we start digging into weird questions. You know, like okay, who was the first ones? To be here, you know, and uh, are, we, are we talking about? But the the greatest I, people, if you, if you, anyone listening, if you've never looked into it, the greatest UFO sighting of all time is the fifteen sixty one Berg event. Oh, absolutely, it, absolutely. It is. They painted it. They painted it. it yeah, they painted it. It was like it it it'd be there, but it the reason why it was important was there were three huge factions involved. It was a beautiful day. They 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 were there for a full hour, and they um. It, it, there's a hierarchy there which we don't know about meaning you know there's there's but but the point is is that there's protocols in place that you're not supposed to break the rules and i think one of the big rules mm-hmm. is is the civilization that's living on the surface has to develop naturally they're not supposed to be interfered with by by older groups not on a massive scale you know of course yeah you find pick off somebody in a forest or a boat or a mountaintop well, are you familiar with uh uh, missing four one one. Yes, yes, I am familiar with that. And yeah. yeah, yeah. There's yeah. You can you can. I think there's certain again. There's rules that could be bent, and there's certain allowances. But you're not supposed to land on anybody's main street. Come out and take some pictures and sign autographs and and say a few words and leave. And the the big reason for that is there's too many questions. The people would they never let you go. People would just ask a whole bunch of questions, and you're not allowed to answer those things. But one is you know, because for was was the first thing you know, everyone asked. It's like okay, um, do you know God? And if you do, do you have his phone number? Type of thing. That would that would be one mm-hmm. of the first questions. Everyone would ask, are you? What is your relationship with God? That's that's one of the questions they would ask. And well, I, when the Lord pulls back the veil. And yeah. lets it when and, and lets the leash go and let it all, so to speak, go to hell in a handbasket. Mm. Then there's no holes barred. There will be no holes barred. Yep. Yep. I agree. But it's Mark. Mark has yeah. another. This this map here. Yep. Uh, how? Um, this map how here. Ac- how? Yeah. How accurate would you say that is? 
have they have, are they still working on the on they're the, still on working on it the problem yeah. with the map is that you run into some perspective issues and everybody's trying to here's the thing for me as you know you know my role with the whole flat earth is is i'm the freshman recruiter you know, i get mm. people into flat earth university and once they get in there, there are some people that go off and, and learn, go into advanced maps. The maps that I've seen that people have made aren't too much different than this. Yeah. They're, they, they're tweaked a little bit. They're bent and condensed a little bit more here and there. Mm. Uh, but, but yeah, it, it, it's funny that you mentioned that because the longer you're in flat earth, the more you start nitpicking at stuff. And yeah, so even yeah, though no even though this is pretty much straight up what the UN flag is, you know, you can you can lay it on top of the UN flag and it'd be and it'd be fine. There's something wrong with it and you just can't put your mm. finger on exactly what. It's mm. it's it's strange. Like like when you look at this one, the one that's behind that was behind Kevin's thing, that mm. one's slightly different than this one. This one this yeah. one's stretched stretched out with the latitude and longitude lines. I actually think this one's probably more accurate than this one. Yeah. But we keep yeah. working. I've, yeah. I've found that a, a lot of the land masses they've tended to work them out that they're uh, not different shape but different size. Yeah. Like Australia, in some yeah. of them, they say that it's too big. And uh, yeah, yeah. Like Australia, that, you know. Australia's brought up a bunch of times. I, for me, it's like, eh. I mean, it's not. It, again, it's not going to kill us because. And it, I'm not nitpicking either. Oh I'm no, just, no, 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 no. It's know, okay if you do though. It's okay yeah. if you do, because the longer you're in, I literally call it Flat Earth University for a reason, and that is the longer you're in, the, the more different paths you go down. Again, some people mm -hmm. go into advanced map making, some people dedicate their lives to just track NASA, uh, others go into music, but it's, it's interesting. I, I still love the map. Hey, here's, here's my thing. I will always use this, use this or this. Because yeah. up until because there is no consensus on what it should be replaced with. I'm going. That's fine. I, I, I tell like the third and fourth year people. I'm going. Look, it's great. You know that you're working on new maps, but eventually someone's going to have to come up with the consensus. But until that point, unless you have some yeah. a, a replacement disc for me, I got to use this because the average person on the street, they you've got to be able to break it down to them in about two minutes. Well, that's and, the same thought. That's the same. The process as the, uh, uh, the globe earth to the flat earth. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Mark, Mark what do, you, do you, you know about Picard, that Admiral Park, Picard that went up in the balloon 137,000 feet? Yeah. You, you, his yeah, yeah, I use, in fact, it was turned into a scotch commercial two years ago, and we're, we're, a lot of us are using it now. <laughs> That's good. That's good. What, the scotch and, or the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all <laughs> flat Earth is a bunch of drunks at this point. No, no, we, it's a no. It was it was weird though. It was a Scotch ad, and the reason why I'd they did that, they they tie they tied it to uh, the his he had a son that would be set a world record for deep sea diving, and so it was weird. The commercial when they showed it, they kind of flipped it to where the balloon got up to a certain height. The balloon burst, but the capsule kept going up. And when it went up, it went into water. And people were going, holy smokes, they actually tell us, you know, that the firmament is, is made out of the water. Bible, the Bible tells us there's water above and below. Yeah, the water's above and the water's below. And it was really interesting. So, yeah, we really jumped on that one. And uh, if you haven't looked it up, yeah, look up. It's, um, is it Hennessy? I think it's a Hennessy commercial. But you just like look at earth scotch or flat earth whiskey commercial and it's 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 well done i mean it's top-notch production value so it that and that came out i think at the end of 2016 so it, it, all the stuff that's been coming out has been been wonderful we the media just cannot can't get cannot get enough of us in fact there's a broadway real quick there's a broadway show off broadway show that just came out in new york uh called this flat earth which is nothing to do with, with Flat Earth. It's actually about some high school students that survive a mass shooting, which is weird. So why would you title that unless you know, they were equating Flat Earth with crazy? And then I, I thought even little things, like the, the Best Picture winner this year for the Academy Awards was called The Shape of Water. And you think, and, and I watched the movie, and I'm going, why would you pick that title? That title helps us as much as anything does. So every, everything's happening exactly as it should. Why would why would they why would the Illuminati make the Truman Show? 
Right. Why would that, mm, why would that happen? I well, if you're going to go down that road, you might have asked me why Google is recommending Flat Earth to anybody. And uh, I, I've done enough my fair share of software development, and I can tell you right now that if you did not want it to happen, you did not want Flat Earth to get out. It take less than a page of code to say, okay, if you see any flat earth combinations of these words, never recommend it to anyone ever, you know, aside from the money, because they, you know, they, they say, oh, we'll recommend it to people because we're gaining revenue. The same thing with the search engine though. And that is when, remember we said in the beginning, it's like the earth is flat in Google, right? That, mm. that, that takes two seconds to fix. Just, just say, okay, if you say earth is flat, bump it down to like sixth or seventh on the list. Just bump it down and keep it down there. Don't let it pop up to the top. It is, it is not that difficult. So why are they letting it happen? I think they're letting it happen because there's something bigger on the horizon here. Bingo. No. Bingo. Yes. I yeah. agree. No, I agree. No, no play on words there, but it's true, meaning that Flat Earth is the frame for a picture that we haven't yeah, seen yet. We haven't seen yet. Yeah. Whatever's, yeah. whatever's having the canvas. Now, that being said, there's only, because whatever it is, has got to be actually bigger than, than the Flat Earth concept. Flat Earth seems to be the ultimate way to open people's minds to something else. So there's only two things that I can even think of that you could actually introduce after Flat Earth that would say, okay, okay just push that off to the side because this is, even though it's related, um, what it, one would have to be some sort of celestial event. Now, if, given the audience that I'm talking to now, uh, you could take that several different ways. You could do a, a fake second coming. You could do Nibiru or the f pretending of Nibiru with some giant light show. You could do uh, the inevitable. I, I still think, look, you're not going to make that many science fiction movies unless you're going to have eventually some giant golden spaceship land somewhere. And all they have to do is come out and say, oh, yeah, by the way, this whole flat earth thing, we built it. You know, or we or at the yeah. very least, it's like we know who built it and we're tied to it closer than you are. Mm -hmm. And most yeah. of your major, major religious houses, despite the amount of people that would be skeptical, there's all, as you know, there's a whole bunch of people who'd be like, whatever they're saying is absolutely the truth. Let's do whatever they want. That's uh, right. Because all they have to do is have technology that's better than ours, and whoever it is has got to look better than us. It's not going to be little green men. It's not going to be anyone that with horns. Whoever it is, it's going to be pretty, it's got to be pretty impressive. Well, it probably like like elves from Lord of the Rings type people, you know. But that's that's what I because yeah, I have remember how I said that you know the the biography would be called unsolicited. We have met the flat Earth community has met almost no resistance during this entire process of now three years, no, almost none, and that shouldn't be possible. If the powers be want to want to stunt us, that they want to keep us from from really uh you know expanding they could and they they're not they're they're not doing it at all the the token resistance neil degrasse tyson could be going on huge rants against us uh, the, you know you could have you could have spun a story recently with could, stephen hawking's dying words is you know eradicate flat earth you know from existence you could have done all sorts of fun things they're not they're letting this happen and the in biggest, fact the biggest resistance mark is amongst flat earthers themselves and against Christians, against Christians. That's yeah. the biggest resistance that's out there. Yeah, and the and the infighting, as much as as much as I I don't like it, I can see it hasn't really hurt us that badly. The, and the only reason it's happening is because the enthusiasm. Once you get get into flat Earth, your enthusiasm gets ratcheted up to such a high level that you you want somebody you, you want to you got to focus that energy somewhere and we've never had a stationary dedicated opponent come at us from science not not on a regular basis you know neil, right. neil degrasse tyson not done a tour we we they they avoid us in debates at all costs and so it's like okay you know you know how the old saying it's like look we'll just fight each other you know it's like a board like a board giant army Right. that doesn't doesn't know what to do and yeah i've i've seen you know christian on christian crime and secular on secular crime and we're keeping it in check for the most part uh because we just keep growing 
and that that but yeah we're 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 dealing with the best we can i agree the best yeah, that's great anything else i can uh brother dave i can do for you brother kevin anybody anybody questions hey, any any random things hey. no well, you were, you were talking about that um, water above and water below thing. And then right. it, it, it comes to mind for me that we, uh, we had the flood, and this is an enclosed environment. All the water come in, so where did it go? Oh you, could, you, oh, you could suck it out. It's supposed, that... supposed to be a drain, right? Oh, well, good and Lord. You water, kidding? The waters this... that we have <clears throat> are clearly actually connected to the waters that are outside somehow or another yeah the this is a it, it, uh, let me touch on a, uh, just a couple things the mechanical processes of this system are amazing uh not only in scale but in their complexity because think of not just not just the water input and output systems which they touched on and i don't know if you watched it uh the movie that was out a few years ago with russell crowe they, they kind of tapped into that where I, the rain was falling for a while and then all of a sudden the water just, it wasn't rain. It was like, yeah, somebody just pulled, you know, pulled a couple valves and, and the, the sky was just coming down in huge torrents because, yeah, it takes a while to fill up, you know, even an enclosed system would take a while. But the, um, the jet stream and the, and the upper, upper atmosphere, which controls all the, uh, you know, it's, it, that's a huge amounts of wind uh, that are up there. The underwater conveyor system, which is like a, uh, a hot tub jet, which, which transfers massive amounts of water around the system. And, uh, and in doing that also um, helps create the weather because it, it transfers energy with it. And then the magma system below that, which people still fought me, still fight me on the magma system. But I go, look, why wouldn't you have an artificial magma system? Why? And they go, well, the same well, volcanoes, they have to be organic. I'm going, Why? They don't have to be. As a matter of fact, that's the last thing you'd want to leave organically because if you have one super volcano that happens on accident, there goes your there goes your system. That's it. Plus, how why would that surprise anyone when the deepest hole ever drilled is eight only miles. eight is eight miles? And it's what eight miles? That's nothing. Eight miles is is nothing in the grand scheme of things. And yet, science. Let me uh, kind of circle back. Science makes those huge leaps. And back in the day, you, if you find an old enough textbook where they show a cross section of the world and you have the, you know, the, the red band, orange, yellow, and that white center, back in the day, they did have in small print down below that we don't actually really know what's going on down there, but, but yeah. we're just putting it out there. But a bit, sooner or later, and that happens with a lot of people, it's like, well, nobody's looking. Let's pull off the small print. And then that's it. And then it becomes their gospel meaning you know a kid sees it when he's nine years old that kid sees it when he's 18 years old it's like well that's what the earth center of the earth looks like, like no it doesn't they have no idea what what's down there it, because they've only drilled down eight miles that's right so tell a lie to, you tell a lie long enough long enough it becomes the truth yep yeah tell me and, and yet i'm sorry go ahead no um do you um the um, the spheres that are above the Earth, right? There's five spheres there. There's you know with that troposphere, stratosphere, yeah, Thir thermosphere, thermosphere, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Are, are, are they are they real? Mm. Mm. That's a good one. And I don't think I don't think when you get up to a certain altitude that they are. I mm. think that the atmosphere bleeds out and after that, eventually you run into some sort of negative physics and, yeah. uh, and, and I don't think there's anything up there. Uh, the, I think the, in fact, I think the Van Allen, radi Van Allen radiation belts, mm. which were announced in 1959, I think that was a short sighted concept mm. that they thought could eliminate the problem. And then they shot themselves yeah. in the foot because two years yes. later, Kennedy's going, oh yeah, we're gonna go to the moon, and then they had to yeah. go back to Van Allen, and yeah. it's like, and he's going, okay, here's what we're gonna do, we're gonna go real fast. <laughs> That's literally his line. It's like yeah. we're gonna go real fast. The Van Allen belts won't even harm us. Like, what are you talk about? You said they were the deadliest thing ever. It's like, yeah, we're gonna go real, real fast. 
<laughs> well, they're talking. They're talking about like the the mesosphere and the thermosphere. Like it's around two thousand degrees C. Yeah. I mean, whether that you know, I I don't know, but that there. Yeah. So I mean, that's impossible for impossible. Our yeah, absolutely impossible. Through. Well, yeah. hell, and and that was revisited with the. Uh, let me yeah. let me end on 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 this because uh, eventually I gotta get some food. The uh, which yeah. is the te- the Tesla launch when uh, where Elon Musk, the man I, I hate currently probably more than anyone because he's just allowed to make up headlines that are just so ridiculous when he sent the car up there i in fact i did this on when i was at the uh, colorado springs as a meetup i just put the pictures up you know i did multiple pictures of the car up there and i told i just asked the audience i go what's wrong with what you're seeing right there and people were just rattling off stuff as fast as they could one of the first things that came up was the temperature stuff Mm. which was forget about the vacuum of space and and how those tires should have just detonated and destroyed the fiberglass and all four wheels but mm. the temperature variances which were you know we were talking about uh, you know even if they made it through the the thermosphere you know even if they were outside of that the temperature swings from supposedly hundreds of degrees positive and then a couple hundred degrees negative i'm going Look, there are still idiots now that they have a frozen windshield. They'll take boiling water and pour it on it, and they'll cr- and they'll crack it. And well, this windshield mm, doesn't, seem, doesn't seem to have any problem. Not to mention the ones that are you know the rolled down windows, which are in the in the doors. Those things would have shattered in two seconds. The the dashes are all plastic. They, tell me where all these materials are that that should have been uh, that should have been melted or destroyed, and this car was fine. Yeah. It was absolutely yeah. fine. That's it's safe. ridiculous. Well, brother Mark, you, you know, I know you've got to go, and I appreciate so much you've been with us tonight. It's been good to catch up with you, brother. Oh, and if, pleasure. And if anything, uh, you, anybody, by, before we go ahead and close, anybody else got anything else? Anybody? Did anybody write anything in the chat room important, brother, brother Kevin, that they wanted to ask Mark? No. Okay, okay. And brother Dave, you got anything, any final thing you want to say to brother Mark, all, all of y'all? Hey, a final thing you want to say? No, just thank you very much for coming. It's very interesting indeed. And Mark, my, my pleasure. And Mark, when you, re- when you wrote me that email and told me that you would make room for us, I appreciate that, brother. So oh, much. no. I, I, you kidding? You're one of the, the first. I think you were the first Christian group yeah. to reach out to me. That's, what, that's, that's right. I mentioned it to the guys the other day. And uh, I hope um, anything that we could ever do for you, if there's something new pops up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in, guy. You want to talk to a group about, all you have to do is dial me. Dial okay. call me, telephone, let me know, or send me an email, okay? Oh, yeah. Be- before I go, is there, and thank you guys very much. The, uh, is, the is there a. Everything. Oh, no, I was, oh, well, well I wasn't even going to plug that. Um, if anyone wants to look my stuff up, just look up Flat Earth Clues in Google. You will find my website. You'll find my YouTube channel. The book is called Flat Earth Clues. It's on Amazon, the audio book. Uh, but look at the community stuff. Don't, no matter what I just rattled off to you for the last couple hours, take, don't, don't take it at face value. Do your own research and ask questions. Duh, you know, who am I? I? I'm just a crazy guy with a glowing microphone. So do do that, and you're going to be in good shape. Uh, I will warn anyone that's going to dig into this. Uh, you know, you'll you'll run into the flat adversity. You'll you'll lose sleep. You'll lose friends, but you'll gain understanding and roll today. So, um, oh, and the last thing um, is this going to be archived anywhere? This thing that we're doing. Get my brother Kevin. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it up on uh, YouTube tomorrow, and I'll send you a link. Yeah, yeah, send me a link, and I'll, I'll mirror it for you guys. Okay, appreciate okay. it very much. Um, All right, guys. Brother, brother Dave, if you would dismiss us in a word of prayer. Yes, okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you thanks for this evening. We thank you for Brother Mark. We pray that you bless him, Lord. Yes, Father. That you prosper everything that he put his hands to, especially those things that he does for you, Lord. But in all his work, may he be truly successful and bring and uncover the wickedness and the deceptions yes, of the fallen yes, angels Lord. that have incurred upon the earth and you desire to, with the, together with their divine counsel, to totally subvert all that God has done, just as they did when the 200 came down on Mount Hermon 
And Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Mm -hmm. So that they have the track record of incursion, incurring in the earth and invading it for their own purposes to subvert mankind in every way possible. And Lord, we pray that all this deception of the globe and these other deceptions that are out there are a part of the end time, great deception. And we thank you, Lord, that you continue to work with Brother Mark and that he continues to uncover new mm-hmm. new truths that are unfallible, that are just would be earth shattering when they come out and bring people to the flat plane of the earth that was created by you. And tonight, Lord, I pray that People would be drawn to this video and to Brother Mark's website and to all his videos and to his upcoming film. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Jesus. So be it. Amen. 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 Amen, Brother Mark. Good to see you, brother. And uh, like I said, if you need us, call us. You hear me? All right. Mm -hmm. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye.